paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Paranormal Karen. Funny too. Paranormal Karen. She's so spooky. Oh, and did I mention she's funny too? Yeah. Cha cha cha. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Paranormal Karen. Um, new guest. Last week, new guest. This week, new guest. I love it. Um, David Marsh from Journey into the Soul is here today. Oh, I forget. Join my Patreon or whatever I'm supposed to be pushing. Uh, sign up for my email hope or my Instagram, either one. A whole bunch of comedy dates are coming up. The summer is going to be awesome, uh, especially I'm booked right through May. I'm very happy about that. And then it picks up after that. So, um, but my friend, we have a mutual friend, uh, Z, who um, I have to just say, I just, I feel like I'm giving Z a plug every time I'm on, <laughs> but my life is doing so much better since doing the SSP. And she was like, oh my God, you're talking to David. And I was like, absolutely good people all around. How are you today? I am so glad to be here. I like to say that this is an ascension portal to help people make their lives better. I love it. And you have, I I don't even know where to start. I think I want to start with like how you came about because you have a um, journeys into the soul series on prime uh, that looks fantastic. I just watched the trailer. I mean, obviously, a uh, documentary and film is your trade. It looks fantastic. And then also, uh, there's so much to talk about. Tell me, what was your start into this ascension process? Is that a good way to say that? You can say that, yeah. Um, I think when you create art, it either comes out of your joy or your pain. And for me, I was on this lifelong quest to figure out what in the world is this thing about? And I was given the typical American narrative. You get one life. There's a judgment. You're a sinner saved by grace. You got to get a job. You, has, <laughs> work hundred hours. Well, there you go. God loves you, has a wonderful plan for your life. But because you're a victim of this original sin, Jesus has to save you. But you got to ask him. Otherwise, you're going to go to hell. Conscious eternal torment forever. And I tell you what, I, a lot of people I know were just like, yeah, I started questioning that when I was 10 mm -hmm. or 16 or 20. I was 45 when I'm like, there's got to be a better narrative. <laughs> did you, but now did you live by that or was it like in the back of your mind? Because I feel like I, there are a lot of people that like a set of rules and I will follow the rules and then I'll be fine, right? Like they don't want to go outside the rules. If you can give them rules, they're happy. When I saw the sign question authority when I was a kid growing up in the 80s, my parents literally said, that's what the devil wants you to do. Don't question authority. The Bible's the authority, your pastor and your parents. Don't question anything. So I'm like, oh, geez, I better just do what I, you know, everybody tells right. me. So I lived with that whole narrative. I mean, I was a music worship pastor at church. I wrote children's music that, you know, God's cool and he's hip and fun, but except Jesus or you're burning hell, you know. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I, yeah, have so to, I have to say one thing, I I I am very hard on my dad because he was kind of a tough guy, but he was the eternal anarchist and he hated authority. And and that is one thing I really appreciate. He was he I remember he said you don't ever trust a politician or you know what I mean? But yeah, I, I know that some people that's a really did you I have to ask a weird question. Did you feel any safety in that before you started questioning? Oh, yeah. Yeah. When, when you are given certainty as your narrative, you're certain that you're on the right path to get to heaven when we die. You're going to get safety and security and a little bit of superiority because mm -hmm. you have the real truth. So there's this underlying arrogance in this narrative that, you know, a lot of people have. Yeah. And that and that arrogance can hide some things. I'm going to I'm going to just throw out a real something uh, that puts a little thorn in my side is uh uh, Mark Wahlberg runs this prayer group, and that's great. That's great. Everybody, I hope they're happy. Only men are allowed to read. I don't know why they won't. And it's kind of like that superiority has something misogynist under it that we don't have to say, or you know, whatever the quote is. But I feel like that superiority can also mask other things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, that's because the man is superior to the woman because that's the woman's covering. So, Karen, I'm assuming your husband has given you permission to do this podcast today. <laughs> My imaginary husband did. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just another example of 
the the patriarchy system, you know, the the masculine divine, the masculine feminine, a little bit out of balance. And then people try to swing it back the other way and say men are bad and masculine's bad. And it's just mad. It's it's the par- paradigm of, you know, I'm right, you're wrong. Right. You love to play that game, whatever the narrative is. Mm-hmm. Women and men read just as well, both of them. A lot of times uh, the women in my life have read a lot better than me. And I'm like, hey, you're right on that thing. Hey, I'm using my intuition. Wait, tell me more about that. So I don't know. I have a real great respect for that feminine intuition. Great. And feminine side. Obviously, that's what happened with you is sort of the feminine side was like, hey, wait a minute. I'm not up on all these rules. So do you remember that moment like when you were like, you know what? I think all this is wrong because I know. Right. Because I see it sometimes. Sometimes I see people that are so sure of themselves on TikTok and I think, well, that's why everyone's going that, you know, I know because Jesus said and it's like, so anyways, I ver- I just had a coffee, Dave, so I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I love it. So, well, I, you know, so I'm driving around in my car in Phoenix, Arizona in 2015 and I am so mad at God. I'm like, God, you created this world. You created me. I'm the subservient being. I didn't choose to be here. My parents had sex. Here I am. You're telling me I'm unworthy and then I'm going to go to hell unless I worship you. Okay. Okay, fine. I'll worship you, but I'll never love you because you're a motherfucker and I don't <laughs> trust you. And I was like, you know what I want to do? I want to crash my car. And I had this very vivid memory. One of those uh, uh, divider things, the barriers in the freeway. I want to run my car into that and kill myself so I could go up to God, grab him by the shirt collar and go, what is your problem? Why are you trying to send everyone to hell? Yes. You're a dick. But then I thought, well, then I'll kill myself and I can't come back and I love my family and that's going to, and then I don't, maybe I'll go to hell. So, okay, I better not do that. So I decided to swerve back into the lane. Wow. Uh, Yes. Because you go back once. You go, (laughs) oh, I thought you meant, I I thought you meant metaphor, but you were like, no, I went on the road. Okay. I was literally like thinking about trying to kill myself, but here's the cool part as synchronicity is in this human game we're playing. Right after this experience, I turned on a podcast. I was listening to the Jay Morris podcast at the time, and Rob Bell was on there. And Rob Bell is a guy that has, was a pastor, and he uh, creating new experiences in his life, his life. And he said, what if heaven and hell aren't places to go? What if there are states of consciousness, and you can be in heaven or hell right now? And what if this is where the action is? And what about the afterlife takes care of itself, and there's nothing to worry about? And it's just a what if, what if, what if? I'm like, oh, never heard of that before. For. And I began to study, well, what happens when we die? And I learned about near-death experiencers. And they all went to this afterlife space. They talked to some consciousness that was kind and loving and said, no, you decided to do this. And I was like, okay, there's something that I can research here. And the first thing I had to do was get rid of the idea that there was a hell. So I researched and researched until I came to the conclusion that there wasn't a hell to go to. And I think that's the first step of me able to be open to new ideas and curiosity and wonder. And the other thing is, um, I think near-death experiences are one of the greatest, you know, somebody, some atheist comic I know was like, how come it only happens to people that believe in God? And I was like, oh no, that's it, that it happens to everyone. By the way, are you still in Phoenix? Yeah, I still live in the Phoenix, Arizona. Hey! I'm going to be at Stir Crazy May 17th and 18th. Come out, send me a text message. I'll have you to the show. Did you hear that? Phoenix? Love it. I'll be there. I'm coming yes, to Stir I love Crazy. That. Okay. So the, now you, to me, you seem like a researcher or um, a, someone that needs knowledge all the time anyways. Is that correct? And this sent you down that rabbit hole? Yeah. So I even started my own little talk show because I do video work. And so I was like, well, let's figure out what's going on here. It's called Exploring the Human Journey. And I've made these YouTube videos. And I was like, tell me more. And the first guess, he's like, well, this is part of the chakra system. I go, whoa, whoa, slow down. <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> oh, energy centers in the body? I have no idea. Is that in the Bible? No. Okay, good. Then I can probably trust it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, it is interesting that the, the the Bible really makes you think everybody else is going to hell. Where the and then we were like, well, there's no hell, and you know, it's all it's all this. It's very, yeah. I don't know. I hate to bash too much on well, whatever. I like to say the Bible you. is it's a collection of books. It's a library, and it's based on knowledge that humans had in the Bronze Age. 
It's not based on Google Maps. They didn't understand you can get an airplane and fly and the, the earth is round. I mean, so these are old narratives, human beings trying to figure out who am I, why am I here? And some people, they have these ways to inform themselves. Um, and, and so I, I just contextualize it. it. It was consciousness at the time. I think consciousness is always expanding, always continuing to grow in awareness. And that's that's where we are now. And then, you know, fast forward uh, in my quest and my thing, what is going on? I was introduced to the book Journey of Souls by Dr. Michael Newton, and that changed everything. I learned he did this process called hypnotherapy. He took people into this relaxed state, and every single person over his 40-year career, he had over 7,000 case studies. They all said, I'm a spiritual being having a human experience, and I picked my life, and I picked my parents. I'm not a victim. Oh, I'm at cause. And they were able to heal issues in their life. I'm like, oh my God, this is this is so interesting. I'm it's absolutely a little, fascinated. It's a Dolores Cannon type thing, right? So Newton and Cannon did not really talk with each other oh. throughout their careers, but they both started late 60s, early 70s. They were both born in the same 1930s, and they both died 2014 and 2016. So they were people that figured out this modality. I think consciousness is always bringing things and these two people picked up on it. I'm sure there were others that go, oh, this can't be true. And then you know, consciousness was like, fine, we'll find receptors and uh, we'll find people on the right frequency. And so I, I gave uh, honor to these two pioneers uh, when I created my docuseries, Journeys into the Soul. Yes. And I want and that's kind of are you a hip, uh, are you a hypnotherapist now? So Gloria Cannon has the online training for the quantum healing hypnosis technique or QHHT. And so I'm like, oh, well, I'm going to learn more about this. So there's a local um, metaphysical school in Phoenix. I studied hypnotherapy there. And then I got the Cannon's uh, online training. So I did that. I started doing sessions with people. And I was like, oh, my goodness, I don't have to do anything. I just say, really, tell me more. (laughs) <laughs> and, it comes, and we yeah. find that the answers are within. It's really cool. But you you know what, too? I think um, I, I almost want to say energetically that you're you're the person for that. Do you know what I mean? Like it's all because I've been to some hypnosis stuff that didn't take. I think it's like even with acupuncture, you have to get the right chemistry and the right person. You know, it's so funny because I... Uh, there's a there was a particular psychic I used to listen to, and he insisted there was no such thing as past lives. And he would always use this old joke, which is literally an old stand up joke. I have met so many Cleopatras and so many Mark Anthony's, and he says it like people came to him with this. And I'm like, he's lying. Nobody I've ever met talking about past lives comes out with something like that. Do you agree? Uh. And those are things in consciousness. Uh, they can be metaphors. I had a, uh, an experience where I saw myself as King Arthur, and I saw myself as a pharaoh, and I saw myself as uh, leaders throughout history. And I was like, oh, and I literally was like, oh, these are metaphors to teach me. Um, so I, I think anytime somebody says, this is definitely true, or this is not true, I'm like, oh, okay, you have certainty. Certainty is mm-hmm. the opposite of faith. It's the opposite of curiosity. So then I kind of like cross my arms a little bit, go, okay, well, tell me more about your idea that you know thing. <laughs> uh, yes. Curiosity, I think, is the, is the, I, I think curiosity is the key to everything. And, you know, I do hit conspiracies pretty hard. So even the Bible is also manipulated by those that wanted to control mankind. So there's a little bit of everything going on there. Um, yes, certainty. And I know they always tell us curiosity kills the cat. Well, cats have nine lives. So maybe we <laughs> should be more curious. Um well, one of the episodes I filmed uh, is, is this lady in Madrid, Spain, and the episode's called "She's from the Future," and she's in this deep state of space, a uh, deep state of relaxation. I, honestly, I don't like the word hypnosis. It sounds like I'm doing something to you. Manipulative. Yep, yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. And she says, "Curiosity is how the universe." expands and evolves i was like oh my god i'm writing that down and that's in the episode and that was a point where i'd like okay curiosity is how the universe expands how consciousness grows and i was like okay so there is something to that that's what evolution is it's like oh i wonder if what would it be like to create an experience where i could understand myself as consciousness i don't know i'll play a human game and here we are and i are all playing our characters that and you're right, that is brilliant. And people who thought there was just an 
an EVP it wasn't. I went, oh, when he said that. So sometimes I'm people like, uh. what's that EVP? Um, and you know what else? That makes perfect sense in a weird way to say this, that curiosity would expand consciousness because it could also be creating more timelines. I think that we are here to play this human game and we're here in two phases. The first phase is I don't know who I am as an unlimited eternal being. I'm playing, I'm David. Oh my God, I'm a victim. I'm religious. I'm married, mm -hmm. have kids, have all these things. And I think there's a second phase of life when you begin to get an awareness. Oh, I'm consciousness. Nothing is real at the quantum level. It's all fields of energy with probabilities based on the witnesser. And I'm like, oh, so nothing's real. I'm creating all of this. I am consciousness. Okay, what am I trying to learn here? Well, this negative thing happened. Oh, your son died of a drug overdose. Mm -hmm. Oh, you went bankrupt. Oh, you're divorced. Okay, instead of going, I don't want this feeling and pushing it away, realizing I created this feeling. And if I simply give appreciation for the fact that I got to experience that, it loses its power. And I'm like, okay, that's where the answers are. The answers are within. And that's the journey I've been on. Yes. And, you know, and I do, uh, I always put this in there though, and please feel free to disagree. Um, there is a, a point of toxic positivity where if someone's in it, you can't go, yeah, but you're going to feel better because your son died of an overdose. You, this is a internal process. You know what I mean? Well, I think grief is, is part of curiosity. What would it feel like to have this level of grief and realize, okay, this is a feeling I don't enjoy. I, so I simply give appreciation for the experiences I have. But yeah, mm -hmm. to play your human character, you have to say yes to things. You have to say yes to love, yes to pain, yes to joy, yes, yes to sorrow. And, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot in there. There's, you know, that's just part of what we're doing here. Yes. And okay, that brings me to a great question that I'm going to, uh, we're going to pause this, folks. We'll be right back. Are you a seeker who craves a life of authenticity and freedom, but can't seem to get unstuck from experiences of duality? My name is Z, and I spent years stuck in victimhood, craving enlightenment, but trapped in a cycle of two steps forward and what felt like a hundred steps back. I felt like I was drowning in fear and shame until I started learning about the nervous system. It turns out that while we are spiritual beings, we are only able to be here because of these physical bodies, and the nervous system is just trying to keep us alive by bringing us back to fight, flight, freeze responses. We can get stuck in these defense states, or we can gain resilience by developing a respectful and trusting relationship with our nervous system. If you're ready to learn more, check out my YouTube channel and join us for online coaching and courses by going to www.anexperiencer.com. That's anexperiencer.com. See you there. Okay. So, um, and I agree. I say I'm in a, not a middle ground, but I agree we're creating our own consciousness and our own experience. And I think there's a, um, there's a certain collective consciousness at the same time. So in other words, uh, somebody can say, I choose not to participate in this COVID game. I'm not going to get COVID. I'm going to blah, blah, blah. But there was still a lockdown that affected them. Is there... Do you... oh, let, me, let me address that. Okay. Yes and yes. You literally said the words that came out of my mouth, May of 2020. I go, look, this is just an energy of fear. This is... I studied virology when I was in the army in the early 90s. This is simply a cold. The coronavirus is not something that's going to kill people. I remember studying these things. And I said, this... It's just a fear, and I'm not going to participate in this. And we have to have these dumb lockdowns and wear masks. I was in L.A. working on a docu series with my friend Lisa Asia at the time, and she was like, "Oh, everybody's freaking out. Oh, I don't know what to do." And then she got sick. I didn't, and I placed no judgment. No, I, you know, I, I, she didn't do anything wrong. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know if I got immunized in the army and I won't get sick. But it, I just didn't want to play that game. It was not interesting to me. I wanted to play the game of creativity. And her and I were creating this couple different documentary series we were working on. That was more fun than playing the, I'm, a, I'm scared, we're all going to die. 
I just didn't want to play that game. You know, I have to say, this is terrible, but me and some of my, most of my friends, we're all comic workaholics and we couldn't believe how much we needed the rest. Like we were mm-hmm. like, oh, we needed the rest. And if you're going to be in a lockdown, do it in Los Angeles, walking all the time, outside all the time. Um, yeah. And also, um, and folks, we didn't, you know, uh, uh, I agree I agree with like creativity and that. And sometimes because we're not saying anybody deserved COVID or anything like that. I think sometimes the negative things that we manifest in our life are coming from our subconscious and may not even be connected. Do you know what I mean? Like, Mm -hmm. like subconsciously, if I have a fear of success, that might give me breast cancer or you know what i mean like that's that's i pulled that out of my butt everybody well, so that's not there thing. is but you know what i mean there is energy that gets trapped in the body and that's part of what when you're in this deep state of an expanded awareness that you can actually have healing in your body i mean i i saw this lady named becky we did an episode called walk the path it's episode number 12 and she literally had this knee pain she walked in she was like yeah my knee hurts and she dealt with a bunch of issues about wearing a crown realizing the crown was her intuition and then the facilitator dr erica middlemiss she says well what about the knee can anything be done about the knee and her higher self is talking says yes her knee can be healed and it talked about it was because she wasn't moving forward and now she's decided she can trust her intuition. Her knee can be healed. She literally has healing on her knee as she's kind of doing it on herself in this higher state. And at the end of the episode, Erica goes, oh, that was great. Good episode. Good session. Hey, by the way, how's your knee? And she's like, oh, my God. She, her knees left and right, back and forth. And then I do this two-week follow-up, and I, I met with her, and her knee was still fine. In fact, uh, just a few weeks ago, I met with her, and not only has – her knee not given her any problems. She's now manifested the house and this lifestyle that she'd wanted to manifest. I was like, this is so powerful. Mm-hmm. And I've seen the evidential experience of it. Ah, uh, fantastic. You know what? And I'm going to throw this in. And then I want to hear some more great experiences. But this is a bizarre because, you know, paranormal Karen's a conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Theorist, and growing much more conspiracy. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I can't help it. Um, has anyone ever during one of these sessions addressed Lyme disease. And the reason that I asked that, well, probably a lot of things, I did not know, but Lyme disease was uh, made by the CIA. Wow. So it's not... I I haven't had any personal anecdotes. I have had uh, other practitioners tell me that people have been healed from stage four cancer with provable results where they had it, they had a session, they realized it was trapped emotional energy, they released it, they had healing, they went to the doctor the next week and they said, we, we don't know why your cancer is gone, you're weird, let's yes. study you more. And they're like, no, nah, I'm good. So I, I don't know specifically about Lyme disease. I do know that there's energies and you know what you what your attention to and what your beliefs are, you're going to get more of that. Mm -hmm. You know, everything's a mirror reflection back to you. And if I spend my time being concerned about dark and scary and they're all out to get me, I think I'm going to receive more and (laughs) give more of that energy. That is true. And I also have to say, I don't know, maybe I'm making this up because I like dark and scary a little bit, but sometimes it's fun. Mm. Well, this is the 3D reality. Uh, the yeah. 3D reality is about victimhood and savior. You know, I'm, I'm a victim. Somebody got to save me. Politics, uh, religion, uh, the conspirituality that we're all attuned to. I just think that there's so many more interesting things than I'm a victim. How about I'm a creator? Right, right. But I also like to make the Absolutely. And I don't think that I don't associate the two like dark, scary things with being a victim. I associate them with, you could say, curiosity. Like, I just find it fascinating as much as I find beautiful things fascinating. I hate to say this because it sounds so stupid, but something about The Walking Dead is fascinating and yeah. fabulous. to and you're, and well, then It's I, fun. Yes. It's fun because you have inside information. So all the friends I know that are into the dark, deep, satanic cabal, baby eaten deep state people they're like oh, i know information and i'm so excited about it. like awesome it's really fun i used to do that too it's it's christianity 3.0 it, it's, now, it, it is it's a the same thing it there is a certain level of watching uh walking dead and another level of 
QAnon. There's a there's a vast uh, spectrum there um, because it, letting anything take over your life like that is one thing. Finding uh, at least that it's interesting. Like I always say, like we're in the movie now. So what's going on yeah. in the movie? But I yeah. really agree. A lot of people also um, the victim mentality is attached to the hero mentality. You can't have a hero without a victim. So I, my new thing is like, just be your own hero all the time. Well, the victim is delicious because if I play the victim and I can tell you my story, I can rehearse it and then I can manipulate you to feel bad for me. And it really is this icky energy and your soul is leaving your body as I'm telling you all these horrible things and you're trying to feel nice and oh, I'm too bad for you. But wow, it gives me an opportunity to feel powerful and I lived in that narrative my whole life, and I can spot it really fast. I mean, somebody's telling, getting deep in story. I'm like, okay, well, what is it you're trying to create here? Oh, I didn't think about that. And, you, you know, earlier you said something about bringing creativity. And I do think that if you're the one with the idea to make something, you're the one that's supposed to do it. Mm-hmm. No one else had, you know, paranormal Karen. So you did. And you're like, oh, I should do this. This is an idea that's welling up within me. And if you wouldn't have done it, there may have been someone else that did it. Because I think that's the way consciousness works. It always wants to move and expand. Right. And you know what else you're right about is um, people don't understand the layers of the victim mentality. Like it's... Again, this is where I think conspiracies can be positive. I think it's been conspiratorially put in everything. In co- competition and victimhood is really sold at every level. And I mm-hmm. think it's it's once you see it though, you can't unsee it. And the whole human game is to convince you you're not in control. The yes. whole human design of this thing is you're not in control and you're not an infinite being with unlimited power. You're just a little human being and there's nothing you can do. That's the design of this game. Yeah. And also, what is your feelings on the difference between creating the game and going with the flow? Because I right now feel like I'm in flow. And it is bringing me to the things I want and the things that I I think I want to say have already created. Like I always wanted Psychic Stand-Up to be the show and all of a sudden it's booked everywhere. But I feel like I'm in a flow. Is there, do you like see a difference between the two of those or they're kind of the same thing? No, you're right on. So I was always taught you couldn't trust your intuition. That's how the devil tricks you. And then later I realized, wait, my intuition, that inner voice, that's the way I move. That's that's the way the universe or God or consciousness moves me is that inner voice. And I used to believe that I had to trust God. And now in the spirituality world, it says you have to learn to trust the universe. And recently I had an experience in the expanded state of consciousness where I realized oh, I'm still being a victim because I'm trying to trust the universe. And if things aren't working out, then I can blame the universe. And I realize that the universe is me. I have to learn to trust my intuition. So going with the flow is like, well, what feels right for me? And I go and make a decision. And if it's not the result I want, I simply give appreciation. And I go, okay. And I begin to get in the flow as you state. And it, that's where the joy of life is. When you're realizing I'm trusting my intuition, and I'm going with the flow and life is beginning to feel good again. That is magical. And, and yes. And this is, um, I want to unpack it for people that are listening and like, yeah, this sounds good, but how do I get there? Um, There is so much, as a person who's getting ready to travel around and almost have her whole life in her car, Mm -hmm. the, I just, I have four winter coats. You know how many winter coats I need? One. And, uh, right? And it programmed in my mind is to look at the other three and go, well, that, but that one's longer and you might need that one. Like there's a weird, like hanging on to, no, I need one coat. I'm going to, that's all I need. And they have friends that get into minimalism because they think that that's the spiritual path. And I'm like, well, maybe so. And no, but, for know, me, if you're going to live in your car, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, and I don't have anything against stuff, but that is literally mental chatter that is not necessary. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like, the, yeah. there are so many things that our mind wants to do to keep us from just going, yeah, take the red coat. Give the rest to the thrifty store. 
you know? Um, so it's, so for people that are unpacking this, they're, I, how do I want to say this? You, when you start to really hear and see your own thoughts, you can s- see like which ones do make you a victim or which ones have been programmed and which ones aren't yours. We all have this space where, who am I? Who am I? And we all define who we are. But when we let all that slide away, it's simply I am. I'm just here. I am. We all have the exact same consciousness. And I think that's what they call the field. And when then you take your human animal that you're incarnated into and you're like, oh, I have preservation and I'm afraid and, you know, things, things that shake me up, I'm scared of because this human animal wants to have existence as its primary motive. And your soul, your soul wants to have experiences as its primary motive. And I like to joke and say, my soul is an asshole. My soul has given me all these experiences my body didn't want. I don't feel safe and secure at all financially or relationship or career. I have no certainty. My soul is like, you know, isn't it great? And my human character is like, no, you're a dick. I want to know things. I want to have surety. So when we get these thoughts that come in and we're like, huh, maybe this is the truth. Huh, I don't know. Maybe the, maybe I can do this. Oh. What is your intuition? And that's that space. It's not easy to get into. You have to eliminate the chatter. Mm-hmm. I do think the psychedelic therapy is one way to do it. And I mm-hmm. say ayahuasca and hypnotherapy save my soul. And if you don't want to do ayahuasca, it's a nice little shortcut. Well, then do a hypnotherapy session. Do an expanded state of awareness. Find out where your intuition is. It is so powerful. I just, I can't speak to it enough. Ha, ha, what are some of... uh like you'd like that aha moment where there are a lot more like aha moments or is it like uh, it just isn't aha new information it's oh that puzzle piece fits in right there yes and there is both there is the oh okay i kind of knew that but now that makes sense well i'll give you an example the very first ayahuasca ceremony i was ever able i was invited to and said yes to i was in a space in sedona arizona with uh, a practitioner a facilitator that gave me the We'll call it plant medicine because that's the cool way to say it. Mm-hmm. Uh, ayahuasca is a leaf that has DMT and a vine that has an MAO inhibitor so it can be absorbed in the body. So you have visions. I sat there and I had my eyes closed and I had this vision of this red neon writing that said, enjoy the ride. Mm-hmm. What? It looked like a Budweiser sign in my mind's eye. I was like, what does that mean? And I heard this voice and it was an external voice that said, that's what you're supposed to do here. And immediately I started going, well, I'm not having fun. I'm not enjoying the ride. I'm the blah, 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 blah. And immediately in blue, the same scripted font, it said beliefs. Wait, what's that mean? And I hear this voice, this ayahuasca voice say, because your beliefs become real for you, you're not enjoying the ride. All of the things you've believed, you're a victim. This can't happen. You can't. Ba-dee, ba-dee, ba-dee. I'm like, oh. So then I saw this like sand and it started growing. I saw two hands manipulating sand and it started expanding. It turned into stars and galaxies and the universe. And this voice said, this is what we are doing. This is what you are doing. I'm like, what do you mean I'm doing? You are creating all of this. I'm like, what? You are creating this. Enjoy the ride. Change your beliefs. You'll enjoy life more. And so this is an example of something outside of me. I walked away from that very first ceremony going, Oh my God, I think I just figured out the meaning of life. Uh, of course. Well, you know, I, it's funny because right now, especially with the work I'm doing with Z, with the SSP, um, this is becoming more apparent because I, you know, everybody knows Utica is not my choice to live. I came out here, the choice was to come out here and help my parents, which I've done. And when I was in it, I couldn't see out of it. Now that there's a light at the end of the tunnel, I get it. I get, uh, you know, maybe I didn't create Utica, but maybe I created, I'm going to help out my parents until the end sort of Mm. thing, or this is our soul group or something that, um, because I hate to say this this way, but because I never thought if you help out your parents, there's a karmic reward on the other side. And I do not like to think like that at all, because that is a punishment reward system. But I feel like now that it's almost over, there is a huge reward. But maybe that reward is just my flow is open. Mm -hmm. And so now I'm manifesting. But like what you were saying, too, there is no time. So this manifesting of the future instead of letting the future unfold and being here right now. I want to manifest happiness today, right now, where I am. Like that's how you start, right? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, I want to make sure people understand uh, our mutual friend Z is a powerful agent of change. Mm-hmm. Z has come into this incarnation to challenge belief systems. Z has come here to be a, a light bringer in certain areas. And uh, the challenges that they have had to go through their life experiences has informed their present to be able to share and joy right. and not be a victim. Z and I had a wonderful conversation where we got to share like, oh, yeah, I had that same exact religious narrative, too. And then we learned, oh, powerful beings here to change consciousness and, and, you know, that's part of the journey is learning something from someone else. That's why I like, you you know, your show here, an opportunity for someone to hear something they may never have heard before or reinforce something they thought was true. And that's why I like to say it's an ascension portal, because when David in 2015 was looking for information, if I were to heard the things in a certain, you know, specific order, I could have maybe gotten to a place of finding joy and peace in my life instead of having to go through all this. Well, I don't know. Maybe it's not true. Maybe Maybe hell is real and I'm being tricked by the devil. I spent a few years in that realm too. And it was only through listening to resources, podcasts, books, videos, etc., that I gained a greater understanding how to get in the flow, how to feel good. And feeling good is when you know you're doing what you're supposed to be doing. Right. And I also, I feel like this podcast is about authenticity. So for anyone that's a role, I want to fully admit this, for anyone that's rolling you are feel free to roll my eyes because I'm uh I'm listening to David because I know where I was the last two years. Like I I know where I was and I know how that felt. So I'm not saying that I've mastered any of this. I'd say I'm starting to tip my toe in and get it. Do you know what I mean? Because like yeah. if I was to come on here and tell people they'd be like, but Karen we listened to your podcast six months ago and you were miserable. So I want it, it. It's a good thing to, to also like, I love how you're doing that. Like, Hey, I didn't have it all right all the time. I'm learning or we're always stepping forward. So that's a, um, yeah, I guess I made well, every podcast is a snapshot in time. Where right. was I in September of 22? Where was I in June of 23? You know, those, Oh, I go back and listen to something I put out and I'm like, Oh yeah, I remember a, that's how I got to that point. It's fun connecting the dots because the whole point isn't to be at the end of the journey. That's when you die because you figured out your human life. It's the journey and enjoying the ride is supposed to be part of it. Awesome. awesome. Okay, hold on, uh, my friend. We will be right back. Hey, everybody. How's that spiritual awakening going? I know. Don't worry. Help is here. Highlyspiritualperson.com is a haven for spiritual misfits and empaths navigating spirituality and mental health. My friend Camille has a plethora of resources on her site to help you on your spiritual journey even if you're just starting out. It includes individual and collective Reiki sessions, personalized guided meditations, sleep affirmation tracks, and so much more. Camille has so much to offer. She's going to be on my podcast in December. I can't wait to talk to her. Her blog posts and podcast episodes explore spirituality and are great for folks carving out their own path. She has written two easy-to-follow guidebooks, one on breathwork and the newest book, is called Manifestation is Easy, and it features 22 step-by-step manifestation techniques, as well as tips and advice on how to overcome the most common blocks and start changing your reality. Go to highlyspiritualperson.com. I promise you, you will get lost in how much information is in there. It's one of my favorite rabbit holes. Okay. So do you believe in a uh, trickster spirit or would you say that is our um, resistance? I think everything that comes into my life comes from my field of awareness. And there's things I want to experience. My higher self, my soul level wants me to experience. And I think there's various ways we can have that trickster energy. We can give it all sorts of names. We can say obstacles. We can say barriers. We can say challenges. We can say, these are ways that my soul wants to experience something. I came here to play this human character and there's things that my higher self wanted me to grow and evolve into. And that's what the soul journey is about. Every time I conduct a session with a client or film a session to produce an episode of my show, I see there's some 
something that person has as a problem, it always gets resolved because whatever we're focusing our attention to is, is what we're going to work on. Mm-hmm. And then there's a resolution and they move forward. So yeah, trickster is real, uh, you know, overcoming challenges. Sometimes you can't, sometimes you have to go through them. It's all real. I think everything's real. Yeah. I, and by the way, for, um, people there's this wonderful book it was i i can't believe (laughs) it it's called the war of art not the art of war the war of art by i think it's stephen pressfield it's a it's not an ancient book and it's about resistance and it is uh really great about what we put in front of us and how others start to change when we don't resist and that i really love he even talks about sometimes how um uh, uh resistance can be bringing in drama it's still resistance are you making your art and it's not just about art and creating it's like where your resistance is in your life and literally i listened to that book and i came home and i started doing like my what I want to call my work, my art immediately, like it almost just listening to it clicked and made that change. Um, so do you believe that people pull stuff in from past lives or do you believe in yeah. past lives? Yes, I believe, I believe that this soul journey that you're on, there's some purpose for the soul to continue to explore and expand and have these experiences and you've had many lives. You've had many incarnations. Uh, every time someone does a session and if some other life experience comes up, it, they, it always informs them. So people say, are past lives real? Well, what's real for me isn't necessarily was it real. It's what was the message? Well, I learned because I was in this space in the 1800s. I didn't get to do what I wanted to do. And then now I realize, oh, I need to be true to my calling. I feel like I need to do the things I want to do. And maybe they make a life change or they make a mindset change. So I do believe past lives are real. I also think that the meaning for past lives is what is the most real for people. Yeah, so they might even, uh, their resistance might even come from a past life, which is kind of hard to navigate, but... but Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll give you an example. I talked to Dr. Diana Page. She's the director of the executive, executive director of the Newton Institute. And she said, I had a past life regression. I experienced myself as a man, kind of like a Viking back in the, you know, like around 1000 AD. And she said, I, I had this feeling that I had a wife and my wife had a child. And the child was stillborn and I was overstruck with grief because that was my goal was to have a child that could bear my name. And so my wife was grieving and I just couldn't deal with her emotionally. And I remember saying, I will never feel emotions like this again. And I walked to a cliff and I jumped off and died. I'm Mm. like, oh my God. So she's in this expanded state of awareness and she's telling her facilitator and the facilitator says the classic tell me more because the answers are within. So she says, now I'm in my afterlife, the life between lives. And uh, my spirit guide comes up and they're just like, Hey, you know, wow, what a life, what an experience. And she had all this shame and guilt. Oh no, I suicided out of that life. Didn't I? And they said, look, that's a human experience. Don't worry about that. Now there's a bunch of things you wanted to accomplish and you didn't, and you've decided that you want to go back and finish that. So now she's here as the director of the Newton Institute, and she's realizing I came here to feel emotions. And my whole life, I've been pushing them away, pushing them away. Now I'm realizing I'm here to feel these. And so I'm being more open. I'm being guided. I'm tuition. I'm having more connections with people. And so that's an example of something she pushed away in another lifetime. But now she realized, oh, that had that experience to inform my life now. And so here we are. We're always learning and growing. Yeah. You know, I think it's funny too. the, uh, um, like here in America, we're like, uh, grief is like, uh, Hey, uh, yeah, your, um, your husband died. When are you coming back to work? Right. Like, like uh, at least other places they have like a grieving period. Like we don't even have a grieving period here. We're like, when are you going back to work? <laughs> it's yeah. Like, yeah. Grief is a powerful emotion. You have to feel it. You have to let it 
Yes, feel it. And I, I love, you know, other cultures where they'll cry in the streets and, you know, raise their hands up in agony and, and they feel they, but us, you know, Americans were like, oh no, just, you know, uh, wear sunglasses, together. don't let them see you cry. You know, Pull you get it together. together. Yes. That's right. But you've had like two weeks. You should be at work now. <laughs> I know. I always laugh because I really, I find uh, Middle Eastern men attractive. And in those countries, I don't think they have trouble crying or I don't think the men have yeah. trouble showing their emotions. And uh, it just is always something, you know what I mean? You always go, oh, you know, a little bit of everybody. I think everybody's doing a little bit correct. That's yeah. what, well, I'll tell you, my personal, my personal example is uh, on November of 2021, Thanksgiving, my 27 year old, he was doing really good. He was in the drug treatment program. He was a heroin addict and he'd been clean and sober for three months. And he, he, he was supposed to come over. He didn't come over at the time. He was supposed to be there. He came in late and he didn't look good. I'm like, uh, what's going on? We later found out he went out to celebrate with friends. They gave him something that had fentanyl in it. He tried mm. it once and then he had it in his pocket. So we spent the day. He was nodded off most of the time. It was Thanksgiving, you know, turkey and football. We go to bed and we find him an hour later. His brother said, dad, he's not breathing. He did I did CPR. We were able to get his heart started, but the blood had not uh, had not been in his brain, so he was clinically brain dead. They did some tests over the next day, and I had this feeling of like, oh no, I did CPR in 2017 and I saved his life. I did 20 CPR in 2021 and I couldn't. I'm like, oh no, I couldn't save him. You know, so I had to deal with guilt and grief. And I was already scheduled to go on a trip to film a documentary with this group called Dive Heart, and they film wheel or the, they help wheelchair users scuba dive experience the underwater freedom. Oh, I love that! And so I was like, "All right, well, I don't, you know, my, my kid just died. Now I don't. What am I going to do? My world just got flipped upside down." And my family said, "You should go." So I went on this trip. I didn't tell anybody what happened because the last thing you want to do is hear the video producer crying about something that they're, you know, I'm, I'm here to share other people's stories. And at the last day uh, I told everybody, Hey, while you've been here, uh, having your experiences, I've learned from you. I've learned we're all going through something. We're all adapting to something. I've watched you guys adapt. There were people that were like buddies for these adaptive divers. And they're like, hey, I've got cancer. and Don't tell anybody. Or, hey, I've got these great financial problems. But I decided to, you know, come here anyways. Even though my kids told me it's okay if they don't have Christmas. And, you know, people lost loved ones. And I just lost my son. And I told everybody, I'm learning that I have to adapt to life. Because while you guys were all here this week, I was planning a funeral. And it, it was like a big what and we all kind of bonded that we're all going through something i did create a documentary it did win some awards and it's this introspective look that we're all in this together and we're all going through something and um, i called it adapting to dive and that was my experience of going through well what what can i do and I, I found out that giving back getting out of your mind and your own personal grief and saying well what can i do to help someone else mm -hmm. uh, that's a powerful way to get through that grief well you know what too it's a um there is this weird boundary reaction of other people. Like I, we just got my mom into memory care and everybody goes, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm always like, no, 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 you don't understand. We, that's where we were trying to get. That makes her life and our life way easier. But there's this reaction that everybody's supposed to go, oh no, and, you know, and it's like, no, no, we've been dealing with it. This is better. Or um, even when my dad passed, my dad, the last year of my dad's life was just awful. And then the, he had that stroke and then he was in the house and it was like, you know, you feel guilty saying when he passed, we were like, whew, thank God he's out of pain. But there's this reaction from others that is like, um, you know, you want to be empathetic for someone, but you never really know. You know what I mean? Does that make yeah, any sense? No, when my kid passed... His torture was over and my torture was over. Right. You know, my spouse and I would sit there at night worried that he was, we we're going to get a call. He was found in a dumpster behind a Home Depot or something. We're just, ah, I was so frustrated all the time. And, and I, you know, I have this profound revelation that he chose me. I had a hypnotherapy session and he said, I'm looking for someone that has enough courage to be my father. I mm. need a dark journey. He said, I've been an ascended master in different lifetimes. I need to experience the deep, dark journey of the human 
experience. You have enough courage. Will you be my father? And I agreed to that. So that was 2017 when I had that revelation. So fast forward, I'm like, oh, okay. He and I are like sole partners here. We have a contract to have this agreement. Yeah, it hurts. But when he was complete with his human journey, I was like, he is happy. He's relieved. Um, I don't have this mind torture of my child is going to, you know, like self-harm and whatever. So it was a release of that energy. Okay. And the, and you just sort of tapped onto something. I feel like I was trying to um, connect to, uh, and this is perfect. You, whatever you, what you just said was perfect because sometimes when we talk about this, creating our own reality, uh, it can come across as your, it's your fault that bad things mm-hmm. happen and it's and you're not creating right so learn yeah. better and that's not it things like well, that's the shame of the law of attraction they say you're creating your reality right. I feel like, then why am i punishing myself what did i do wrong it's another victim paradigm right so again layers and layers and layers of this so to uh to like let's flip it to my situation so there was no question I wasn't coming to help my parents. I, mm-hmm. you know, uh, I'll say it a million times. You to go isn't really my choice or my place, but that is our soul contract. So that a bit of comedy, isn't it? Yes. It's, oh my God. Talk about when you were saying curiosity expands. That's something I feel here. It's like, we're five hours from New York city and a bunch of people here have never gone to New York. Why wouldn't you just go look why wouldn't you let's take a day? But there's not that curiosity for that to expand. Um, but so when we're talking about creating our own reality, we're not saying it's all Tony Robbins life. There's some stuff in there that you got to do that you were just saying is a soul contract. So you shouldn't feel shame or guilty if you're not feeling exactly as happy as everyone else. Is that am I making any sense, David? You're you're right on. So you you are ultimately yes we are creating a reality but it's not like if i think really positive good things will happen if i think negative bad things will happen that's not the ultimate truth the truth is it's all there so you can inform yourself well what would it feel like to have this experience and so my soul wanted to have or agreed to have the experience of having a son die of a drug overdose. Okay, did I like that? No. So all I'm going to do is give appreciation. I don't need to have that experience. I've got two other children that are in their 20s, and they're super cool, super happy people. And so I don't have to have that as an experience anymore. And when you give your your go with the flow energy to how can I learn and expand from this? Learning doesn't mean pass or fail. It just means how can I incorporate this experience? Then you give appreciation for that and you can move on to other things. I want to experience what would it be like to have unlimited wealth and bring my creativity to the masses in movies or something. So that's the space. What would it feel like to be a stand-up comedian that traveled America and made more money than you needed so you could have this flown upon? What would that be like? And what would it be like for people to laugh their asses off because – I think I'm the funniest person ever. And so they will get to experience me, you know, however that would work for you. Right. And I also, uh, a a different version, I'm going to call this a subversion of what you're talking about, is, um, uh, you know, when people get all upset about, like, it's weird. I There are things I don't have fear about. Like, COVID didn't scare me ever. Like, even when I got it, it didn't scare me. Like, I felt... And this is why I say we're in the movie now. We all came here because we wanted to see. I think the United States is about to go through a revolution. Why are we here? What what cool part of the movie are you in? Right? And I kind of feel that way. There is a positive fear. And I don't mean the fear that makes you run away from a predator. I mean, like, I can't explain it. And so (laughs) we might have to agree to disagree. But it's like when you're doing paranormal investigations, some people are like, I don't want anything to do with the haunted house. And the rest of us are going in and something falls and it's like, holy crap, that was awesome. So yeah. it's a mix, right? Well, in, in conversations with God, Neil Donald Walsh, he, he says, 
what would you want to be like in this scenario? So if you're in a place where there's a homeless person, you're like, oh, it's your own fault. You're homeless. Do you want to be that person? Or do you want to be the person who says, oh, hey, here's a dollar. You know, I know you're probably going to buy some substance that, you know, makes you temporarily forget your misery. But you know, how do you want to be? Do you want to be the person who says, well, instead of giving you a dollar, here's a, a, a piece of fruit or well, I don't know, whatever. Mm-hmm. How do you want to experience? So everything here is to inform us. If you're hardcore and one religious or political side, how do you want to experience yourself? Do you want to experience yourself as I'm a defender of truth? I'm right and everybody else. Or do you want to experience yourself as like, huh? I, I don't really understand you. Tell me more. And you're going to find out that person just wants to be safe and secure. And they're ranting and raving. Well, what if you could help them feel safe and secure? Maybe we could agree on the things that we can all agree on. Right. Which is what I hope where I hope we're going. And that expands the universe, right? Yeah. Yeah. As one expands, the all expands. So simply the fact that you are here on this planet is enough for the universe to expand. And if you do something like say, huh, Maybe I can be in touch with my intuition. The universe expands. It's not like you have to go out and write a book and have a self-help ministry and do movies. You don't have to do that. All you got to do is go, well, what is it I want to do? Because when you're so focused on everything else, uh, if I do this, then that'll be, well, what is it I want to do? Well, I want to be a good person. Great. The universe just expanding. Mm, yes, that makes so much sense. And, you know, in it, like I, I, it's interesting because I learned tarot on my own. And sometimes I'm like, I need to find a class and take a class. And then I'm like, "Hmm, that's not how I learn. That's not how I do it. And some people do great with that. And I push, uh, if you have a class, please, there's people that are, I was not a school person. School people, that's how they learn. I learn a a different way. I can't Mm -hmm. learn from a book. I find everything to realize that. Everything's an oracle. And so when you get in touch with your intuition to help somebody on their journey, you're you're helping the universe expand because they're expanding. Everything's an oracle, whether it's the gene keys or the human design or numerology or astrology, you know, all the things that I and you probably just love exploring. You know, what is we can go into reality trans surfing. We can, you know, what where's the wisdom for the the ages? You know, let me find the secret to the knowledge of life. It's all an expansion. And so, yeah, tap into your intuition. Show people tarot cards. Super fun. I used to think it was the devil. And then I'm like, no, it's not the devil. It's simply informing me. And, and it, it, it can be predictive, but really it's there to, to inform what's your intuition already telling you. Yes, it's uh, they're pieces of paper. That's what I say. I was taught they were pieces of paper. And it's like anything, that everything has as much power as you give it. If you want to yeah. say a doll is possessed, then you can have Annabelle. If you want to say these are beautiful pieces of paper, that's what you get. Um well, what a pleasure. David, tell everyone where they can find you, where they can watch your series. Tell us everything. Well, everything's one place, davidmarshproductions.com. And on there, you'll find Journeys into the Soul. You can go to the website, Journeys into the Soul. I created this docuseries. It's 20 episodes. I just had an idea and I did feel like if I have this idea, I wanted to see regression sessions. I couldn't find anything. So I'm like, well, maybe I should make it. So I just went with the flow. I made sessions in the US. I found myself in Europe last year. And for five weeks, I traveled around with a backpack and a suitcase and I filmed people having regression sessions. Every single one of them has something in it for you. And you can learn, you can say, huh, me too. Every single one, there's people in Croatia and Italy and Madrid, Spain and Isle of Wight and Des Moines, Iowa and Moscow, Idaho and people all over. They're all here learning the same thing. How do I get in touch with my intuition? How do I have an expanded state of awareness? So I created that and um, it is just the most fun for me to watch people I now personally know, whether they're the facilitator or the client and you know see how their lives are doing and what's what's happening in the world. So super fun for me. And you're so good at it. Uh, the videos I was watching, you're so good at it. Um, the weird question, but I'll just throw it out there. When other people have ideas for projects, should they contact you? Um, possibly. I mean, as a producer, I kind of just get an idea myself. I do have people come to me with ideas and sometimes I'm like, yeah, I don't mind. Tuition just doesn't want to do something right. on, you know, this topic or it's just, 
doesn't interest me. I'm really interested in uh, the. <laughs> I'm interested in the Messiah Savior model. I used to want to save people from hell, except Jesus. Now I want to save people from their own mind. You're the creating all your problems. Get in touch with your intuition. Yeah. And you know, to that point, I, I have a website called Soul Journey with Dave. Dot com And I can help people. We can do it over Zoom. And I can help people get into that expanded state of awareness where they can see issues in their life and they can go, oh, now I understand. And I think it's this soul journey is the funnest thing. I'm tapped into the energy of, well, who am I? Why am I here? What's my purpose? And it's so fun for me. Excellent. And uh, Journey into the Soul and also uh, David Marsh, not Marshall. Dave, Dave Marshall Productions, David Marsh no. Productions. <laughs> yes. Don't tell my website wrong. And, and just so you know, it's journeys. It's plural. Uh, there was a yoga lady that has journey into the soul. I'm like, oh man, that was a good name. Oh wait, journeys. Cause there's a bunch of them. There oh, let's go. do that. <laughs> Yes, and uh, uh, I purchased everything around Psychic Stand Up with misspellings, and I've, I've just bought all of them. Oh, smart! Um, and all your information will be in the show notes, so um, folks, you can do that, and uh, and and you can find my friend. This was wonderful. Thank you for coming on, David. I hope you had a good time. I absolutely. I love what you're doing in the world. Keep creating your authentic ripple effect in the world. It's so needed. Thank you. And I can't wait to meet you hopefully in May at Stir Crazy. We'll be there. All right. Uh, all right, everybody. Thanks to uh, Mike at Uno, Mike Flynn at Uno Rising Media. Um, we'll see you on the Patreon or we'll see you at a show. Join my email list if you really want to know about everything. And like I said, a lot of shows coming up. And uh, have a great week. Paranormal Karen, she's a spooky kind of queen. Paranormal Karen.